Hello and welcome to the video. This is about putting this thing, which is a TF Mini Plus rangefinder, into the Matek F405 build that we've done into this AR wing with Ardu Plane. Now, if you haven't been following along, the link's here to go and have a look. Uh, this has been a fantastic build. And the whole point of me using the F405 was because it has so many serial ports, so I could try lots of different things. And this just happens to be the latest one. Now, why would I want to install something like this TF Mini Plus? It's all about auto landing. Now, I've already done a video where I showed how you set up the kind of shake to wake auto launch stuff so the model can take off into the air under its own steam. But with Arduplane, you can also do automated landings as well. Now, there are two sensors that are really needed. One is the airspeed sensor. Again, I have a video on that. Go and have a look. But the other one is this thing here, which is a rangefinder, which is going to go underneath the model and point down and give um, about six meters with this particular one. Uh, that's about 18 feet for those of you who uh, are Imperial uh, of range. So as the model is coming in, it'll actually be able to detect exactly how far above the ground it is and flare and cut the motion things at the appropriate time. Now, automated landings kind of work without this stuff, uh, but it's an awful lot trickier to get right. Putting something like this in the model is relatively cheap and cheerful. Now, this one's come from 3DXR. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and buy exactly the same one and with a little bit of crimping to change the connector on this thing because it doesn't come with the right connector. We need one that's going to plug into the spare UART on the F405 Matek flight controller that we're using. It's a relatively straightforward process. Now, all of this stuff is already covered in the Ardu Pilot Wiki. You can actually look up this particular Bennywake TF Mini Plus within all of the documentation and everything you need is in there. All the settings, what you need to change, so that's pretty straightforward. Now the only thing I need to put a little bit of thought into onto this wing is whereabouts is it going to fit physically on the wing itself. Now there's lots of room inside the model. Uh, in front of the buzzer seems like a reasonable choice. There isn't lots of magnetic fields within something like this, so that shouldn't upset the compass. And I also need to have a look at what spare serial ports that I have. Again, I've got quite a few to go at here because the F405 has lots and lots and lots. So I've decided to, because of where it's going to be placed, use serial port 5, which is the one just behind where the GPS is plugging in. Now in there we have the plus 5 volts and ground as well as the receive and transmit. So first job then is to prepare the Bennywake TF Mini Plus rangefinder. So the first thing we need to do is to cut the cable to length. Now we know where it's going to be. Uh, give myself a little bit of slack in case I mess up the crimping. Crimp on some DuPont style servo connectors and then use a four way servo housing to pop everything in and that's going to work. Take notes of the particular wires and the order they go in here. You want the red wire at one end, then the black wire, then the white, then the green at the far end. That should make sure that the receive and transmit are swapped around and everything is going to work. Now that that's done, let's plug it into the computer and set up all the parameters. Now there are a couple of little gotchas with this and I'll go through as we set everything up. Uh, the main one is we're going to have to reboot the flight controller for everything to work. So what I'm going to go and do is go into config and tuning into the full parameter list. And all I'm going to do is put in all of the values recommended in the Ardu pilot documentation for this particular rangefinder. So the first thing we're going to search for is serial 5, uh, because that's the serial port we've decided we're going to use. So here we need to set the serial board rate to 115, which is going to be the right one, and set the serial protocol to be for a rangefinder. So serial protocol goes to 9, serial board goes to 115, hit enter on both, write those parameters, and that's the serial port configured. Next thing we need to do then is we need to go and sort out all of the range finder pieces. Now there's four things that we need to set in here. I'd recommend just searching for the specific one. So put your underscore afterwards and then you'll be able to find the minimum, maximum and the other things you need to. So first of all, let's go for range finder underscore type. We're gonna set this to 20, which as you can see here is Bennywake TF Mini. Let's write those 
changes back to the flight controller. And then let's set the other three things we need. First is going to be the minimum value. Uh, again, just going to go what was in the wiki. So we're going to change the rangefinder minimum centimeters, which is uh, the, how short or how close it is. And we'll just click 30. In my testing, actually, here, you can get away with a lot less. So we might change that when we actually do the auto land. Change it to max. Uh, in the documentation, indoors, it'll do 1,000. Outdoors, it'll do 600. That's centimeters. So that's six meters in height, which is pretty high. Click OK. And then the last one we're going to do is the ground. And this is the value when it's actually sat on the ground. Now, if you have a model that has long landing gear, then that's going to be quite high. I'm going to guess at five, but what you would do is pop it onto the desk, see what the range finder is actually reading, and then pop that number in there. So that's it. Now we're all saved. Next thing we need to do then is we need to be able to see the range finder in the mission planner screen so that we can test it. Now I'm not going to install it yet. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, plug it in and then I'm going to wave my hand over it at different heights to make sure that it's going to read it. Now the rangefinder isn't going to work until we reboot the flight controller and this catches an awful lot of people out because they just go to the next step and you think you've done something horrible, particularly when you've clipped the end off the unit and you've already modified it. It's going to make it hard to return. We'll do this really easy. Just go into the uh, quick section, set the view count. We can have a certain number of columns and rows in here. So I'll have three columns and three rows. That will give me some extra things that I can set. And then what we'll do is we'll double click on one of them and we'll set it up for range finder. And that way I will be able to see the distance that the range finder is reading. And then we're ready for the next step. So now we've done that, I disconnect, uh, power it from the battery. So the five volts is being supplied to the rangefinder and you have the rangefinder plugged in. And then once it's booted, plug it back into Mission Planner. And when you connect, as I move my hand over it, you can see that the rangefinder is reading the distance. And actually it's pretty accurate to be fair. So this is a great unit this this tf mini plus again links in the description if you want to use it on one of your models um, there was an earlier version that i've looked at on the channel uh, but this one is uh, a slightly neater version and it's and it's easier to install on a wing like this so let's talk about that next next thing i need to do then is to pop it into the wing i'm going to pop it in that position that i measured before so i'm going to cut into the foam uh, slightly smaller than the size of the unit because we want it to be a very snug fit. A little seam of glue will also make sure that it doesn't move around. But if you do it small enough, then it becomes a very snug friction fit into the model. I've also cut away just a little bit, a couple of millimeters of the plastic support underneath. And hopefully you can agree it is very unobtrusive. So that's how you install a rangefinder into a model like this. Uh, so join me in one of the future videos where I will talk about some of the tips and tricks that Ben at 3DXR has been taking me through where you can actually set up uh, a mission where you can do auto landing at the end or you can have it set so that that is almost like a program, like a, like a header that the system can jump to that actually has the landing cycle set so it knows where to fly to where to approach how to float down into the ground and how to land uh, doing it with Arduino plane in particular is always an impressive thing to watch particularly with something like this that helps the model know exactly how high it is off the ground as it comes in i tend to find that it will land the plane better than i can and that's always a little bit disappointing so join me in a future video where we will explore auto landing but hopefully now you know how easy it is to put something like a rangefinder on an Arduino plane machine, even if it's not a Pixhawk. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby.
You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.